Assalamu alaikum and good day everyone. I'm Atira Minudain and today we are here with Rushan Abbas, a Uyghur American activist and advocate from Xinjiang, autonomous region in China and also with her is her husband Abdul Hakim Idris. Uh, Rushan is the founder and executive director of the non-profit campaign for Uyghurs uh, and Abbas became one of the most prominent Uyghur voices in international activism following her sister's detainment by the Chinese government in 2018. Welcome, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today. And um, Rushan, we're just going to start off uh, by, uh, could you give us a rundown quickly for our viewers, um, educate those who are unaware about the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Could you share with us, please? Thank you, Akira, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, currently, as we speak, millions of people are taken to the concentration camps and the millions more are enslaved in forced labor facilities and the, about the million Uyghur children are taken to state-run orphanages. So basically, the Uyghurs are facing an active genocide with the Uyghur women facing forced sterilizations, forced abortions, forcibly inserting IUD devices inside of their uterus. And also, many of the uh, young people disappeared and they are being the victims for the organ harvesting. So when you look at the Geneva Convention's description of the crimes of genocide, almost all of the, uh, the facts are happening to Uyghur people today. As I mentioned earlier that we have also Abdul Hakim Idris, which is uh, the husband to Rushan Abbas. And um, not to forget that his family, his uh, brothers, um, parents, sisters, uh, went missing in summer 2017. And could you share with us, like, how has it been since? Have you had any communication with them as well? The last time I uh, spoke to my mom, uh, April uh, 25th, 2017. I was so close to my mom. Every day I talked to her. We, we had a long chat, you know. Then uh, she, uh, last time she told me don't call me again. Because if she spoke to me already at the time, Chinese Communist government took my brother, his wife, my sisters, their husbands, their children in concentration camp. And the uh, Chinese Communist government put a non-Muslim Han at his Chinese man a family in our home to leave my mom together and it was for mom my dad worse than death worse than prison because a home is uh, after you know you have a terrible time good time on the street on the work and you go home this is your own and even you cannot have in your own home there is somebody watching you, you don't feel safe you, you know you are not safe and you have served them cook them, bring them tea. You are like a slave in your own home. And uh, from that time on, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I lost the contact with my mom, my parents, and my siblings, I, uh, I lost my mind. I, I depressed. I couldn't sleep. Normally, I'm so very uh, easy, happy man, you know, uh, going along with everybody. So I depressed. And uh, my wife, Rushan Abbas, saw me and she spoke uh, in one of uh, think tanks September 2018 about my parents, my brothers, my sisters. And after that, uh, six days later, Chinese Communist government took my uh, sister-in-law, my wife's sister, Dr. Gushan Abbas, like a hostage. And also we want to know how has the progress been since you started the campaign? Um, we are trying everything we can and the, I am speaking out out of necessity and the, I quit full time my uh, I quit my full time job and became a full time activist uh, starting from 2019 and the, we are creating some uh, momentum and the impacts we are trying to uh, raise uh, international awareness and they are also uh, trying to reach out to interface societies as well as the politicians and the international entities 
such as uh, United Nations, European Parliament, and the uh, Organization for Islamic Cooperation, and the, any uh, of the politicians and the uh, parliament members. So we are actually uh, creating some, uh, some impacts. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm pretty sure you're doing an amazing job because um, in February this year, a campaign for Uyghurs was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize alongside Uyghur Human Rights Project. So congratulations uh, for you and your team. Um, secondly, how do you feel about it and ha has it made any difference in your struggle? Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it is a uh, confirmation um, and the uh, uh, Actually, you know, we are very proud. Um, no matter what the result is going to be, outcome is going to be, it's a historical uh, thing to have an or Uyghur organization, you know, two Uyghur organizations uh, being nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, yes, uh, it is actually, it did uh, create some more uh, effectiveness for our work because of the recognition. And uh, it is a very prestigious uh, recognition for us. But Sacrificing is huge. My own sister, Dr. Gulshan Abbas, a retired medical doctor, she was abducted as a retaliation for my activism in America as an American citizen. Uh, basically, the Chinese government is, uh, is trying to intimidate me or silence me. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, I doubled and tripled down my efforts because the Chinese government doesn't understand the power of love. Mm -hmm. The love that we have for our people, the love I have for my sister, that refuels me every day and that leads me to keep fighting onwards. How old were your sister when she was taken? When she was taken, she was 56 years old. She retired at an early age due to health reasons. Mm -hmm. Now she's over 60 years old. When I first started to be vocal about her detention and the, uh, raised her case in all platforms and uh, having um, her picture on all of my social media and carrying her picture in every place I went, I took her picture with me to Geneva, to Brussels, um, to, uh, you know, when I protest in front of the Chinese embassies. But then the Chinese state media started to attack me and demonize me and by saying I was stealing other people's photo, claiming my missing relatives and spreading lies about China. And as we all know that um after your family was taken away, Rushan decided to speak up on the issue. Um, and then what happened next is your sister went missing. And I understand that you had a documentary, In Search of My Sister by Jawad Mir. And we want to know how has the response been to you and also the Uyghur community? Uh, this uh, In Search of My Sister, this documentary film is actually uh, uh, explaining the uh, genocide and atrocity the Uyghur nation facing today based on our personal life. If we speak today, Chinese Communist government put more than three millions in, in concentration camp and they separated millions of children from their parents. You see, you know, uh, this is not number. This is me and my wife. We are victim of this genocide with our face. And we just came from Turkey. There are more than 60, 70,000 uh, Uyghurs uh, living there. Everybody has the same situation. It's not, not just about us, you know, every Uyghurs. In the diaspora, recently came from uh, East Turkestan, more than 100,000 Uyghurs. Everybody has, some have their wife, kids, some have their parents, I have the kids there. So in, in this era, we cannot communicate. It's maybe for some, uh, some folks, it's like a, a story for, for me. If I go in the night, close my eye, want to sleep, you know what I think? I think my parents. First come there, you know, my mom, my dad, every day. It's almost five years. You know, if I knew they are passed away, I could, you know, make a dua. Yeah. Uh, maybe I cry, but I make closure. my peace. Yeah. 
but not knowing how is going them, you know. Is their life or not sick or they have difficulty or humiliation or like a slave, you know. This is worse than death. This is we face them today. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that must has not been easy for you. It's been five years. And um, I also understand that the United Nations recently published a report uh, saying that the Chinese government had committed serious human rights violations in Xinjiang. And the report's findings point to mass detention, coercion in the implementation of birth control measures, torture and sexual violence uh, in state-run detention facilities. Uh, personally, what concrete action do you think that can be done by the UN and even the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, for that matter? Yes, uh, thank you for asking this question. It's very important for us. Before the Chinese Communist government they conducted this genocide, they took over the UN, uh, Human Rights Commission, in their hand. They uh, influenced the uh, organization of Islamic organizations. So the two organizations, one is UN, one is the uh, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, didn't speak last five years anything about the Uyghur Muslims. Mm -hmm. I think that the main goal to, for, for creation of Islamic, especially for the Islamic organi uh, for Organization of Islamic Cooperation was to protect minority Muslims. They failed. They didn't, you know, uh, uh, did a statement, condemn the Chinese government, or they didn't accept us to listen to us, what's going on. But uh, uh, nevertheless, today we have a report from UN Human Rights uh, Commission. It's a weak report, in our uh, opinion, mm -hmm. but it's a report mm -hmm. uh, telling, you know, China conducting uh, crimes against humanity, which those law in Second World War in Nuremberg, many German Nazis where you know brought off the courts this is the, the, the same same crimes mm -hmm. so uh, then many uh, parliaments and uh, uh, some governments uh, uh, accepted this is a genocide and then there was a uh, independent court Uyghur tribunal they concluded this is a genocide mm -hmm. so i think today the uh, all uh, uh, the, the, the global community especially the muslim majority countries has in hand mm -hmm. a document from un from independent to court. And the, the, there will be a debate right now going on in the UN Security Council to debate the atrocity, the genocide about the Uyghurs. They will be vote. Uh, we asking the from uh, Malaysian government to uh, vote to f for favor it because it's like a one vote, it's matter. Mm -hmm. And the, there is no, uh, no neutrality for the genocide. Uh, this is not time to keep the balance, you know? Yeah, yeah uh, this is, uh, uh, you are on the right side of the, the history or wrong side of the history. And, and I think uh, uh, we are not different from Malaysian people. Mm -hmm. We, you know, like a Malaysian people uh, are very tolerant people, very peaceful people. And they have so beautiful culture and get with everybody along. We, in our country, we were, you know, in the center of the Silk Road. We saw many religions come and gone, many different people. We, you know, we have so just uh, uh, friendly people. We have very beautiful culture. So I think the similarity is uh, even and 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 uh, how we walk, how we talk is very really similar. Mm -hmm. So I think that Mal we are not far away from the Muslim country. We are in the heart of the Muslim country in Central Asia. I think the Malaysian uh, people, especially the government, the politician, has the obligation to stand up on the end of this genocide, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, we are talking today what we are talking. We are talking from the regime burnt Qurans. Billions of Qurans they burned. Demolished the mosques. Destroyed cemetery. Even the dead people that didn't escape this. And you know, uh, we ha have no right to learn anything about our Islam religion. It's you know, forbidden, right? Forbidden. There, there, there is no school. Mm -hmm. uh, you, for example, if you have a kid, you cannot say to him, you know, I believe in Islam. It's a crime in Chinese uh, uh, law until uh, he or she is 18 years. Uh, you cannot talk about this. The, the, this is the, the, the same as uh, uh, genocide is going on. And I think that uh, what we asked for Malaysian people to pray for us.
Thank you so much, Abdul Hakim, for sharing your thoughtful yet I'm pretty sure it wasn't easy for you to speak up on that as well. I, I feel for you, I feel very sad for uh, after hearing that. And uh, before we end today's episode of Fireside Chat, um, Rushana, we would like, uh, what is your message for the people that are watching out there that maybe they aren't aware or they don't know enough uh, about the situation uh, with, the, with your right, community right now? Um, you all heard what Hakim and I said. This is what's happening today, and it's not just happening in the far away or within China's borders. Chinese government is trying to control the entire world. So today, to take action for Uyghur Muslims, speak out and do something to have Organization for Islamic Cooperation, or the United Nations, or your own politicians, your leaders in this country, is not only to speak out for the future of the Uyghur Muslims, but it's only, but it's also to speak out for the future of this world, because what's at stake here is what you are leaving behind for your children and your grandchildren. If you don't speak out and hold the Chinese communist regime accountable, then it will be our future generations who will face the consequence of an illiberal world. So what's happening today to the Uyghur people could be the future for the entire world, all the Muslim faith. So we are all responsible for what happens next. Thank you so much, Rushen and Abdul Hakim, for being with us here today. And we at Sina Daily hope those watching have learned something new and opened your eyes about the situation in Uyghurs today. Uh, we are all praying for you and for your well-being, and I hope someday you get to reunite with your own family members. And uh, don't forget uh, to follow us on all social media platforms, Sina Daily My, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sina Daily, to watch all our video programs. I'm Aki Ramin. Until next time, thank you for watching.